Hey guys, Adam Harvey here. Hope you're doing really well. Um, this video has been requested uh, by a few people and it's going to be a look through one of the two demo pieces that I put together for Audio Imperia's uh, great new choir library chorus. I was super fortunate to get a chance to put a couple of pieces together for that library. Uh, this is one of them, the shorter one. I will do a video for the other one as well, but that'll probably come a bit later. Uh, so we'll start off with this one. This is a piece I wrote called Planetfall. It's sort of a fairly traditional, you know, symphonic piece with lots of big epic choirs and stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to it. We're going to go through sort of section by section, have a look at the basic way that I've arranged it and laid it out and how I've used uh, chorus. And we'll also go a little bit through mixing as well, but more just about mixing principles rather than track by track, because actually there's not that much mixing or mastering really going on. So I think what we'll do is just start by playing through the whole piece and then we'll go from there. So there we go, it's just a little piece I put together called Planetfall. Um, yeah, so I suppose we can start off by looking at the sort of feature of this, which is the great new library chorus by Audio Imperium. Uh, and I actually only used um, one articulation uh, in the whole library to create this whole thing. I basically used the women's energetic syllables and then the exact same articulation for the men, the men's energetic syllables. Uh, they're so useful, so playable. They're almost like a performance patch, really. Uh, you can just play and, and they sound fantastic. So if I put them in solo and play those. I've literally just played these in. There is a syllable editor, but I haven't played with it. I've just used the automatic syllable uh, changing mechanism. So basically the syllables are just changing automatically, um, but you can create a custom syllable changer that will change the syllables in the way you want them to. And I've literally just played this in super quick. Um, all I'm really doing is using the modulation data just to ride some of these longer notes and create you know, some dynamic contrast. So. <laughs> The rest of it just sounds great by itself. I'm using a tiny bit of volume automation here just to sort of you know, bring stuff in, you know, up and down as I need to. Um, yeah, so we have these sort of short staccato um, sort of chords in the choir. That big long held note there. And then we have this section. longer chords here. And then these big staccatos at the end, followed by a, a long hell chord at the end. And I actually haven't played these in, you know, I could have spent a lot more time refining this, but I just, you know, because it's a big um, symphonic piece with a full orchestra, they sound great in the mix just as they are. I could have spent a bit more time polishing them up, but, you know, just in the context of the mix, they work great. <laughs> yeah, so they sound you know, really great, pretty much straight out of the box. I have done a tiny bit of mixing, but really not that much, just fit them into the um, the overall mix a bit. So if we move on maybe to the brass, because that's probably 
where the most interesting or second most interesting stuff's happening. So yeah, this is all Audio Imperia again. Um, Talos, the low brass, and the tu- uh, just the low brass actually, and the rest is Jaeger. Um, so we have these sort of short notes in the trumpets here. Sound great. And then that's sort of countered by what's happening in the horns. And I'm just key switching between long and short articulations here, using a bit of mod data just to get stuff sounding good. Up to these long hell chords there. So it's sort of a bit of a, almost like a call and response with the um, trumpets and the horns here. just supported by the low brass where we have these kind of counter elements going on. So yeah, just great declamatory, you know, big staccato low brass, really, really huge sound. Pretty straightforward. Um, we move on to this next section here. So what we have going on here, we have sort of a melody starting off in the trumpets. And I'm just using my usual technique of uh, combining short articulations in the trumpets and long to create some sort of a slightly more realistic and accented um, start to each note. So I'm literally just using shorts. That's being combined with So we're getting the great legato from the first trumpets up here and then the sort of bite from the second trumpets and combined it just sounds a bit more realistic. Just have the horns filling out this section. And then just a little run there, which sounds really good. Um, then we have just the low brass playing these sort of uh, staccato notes. Just providing a kind of motor, really. And then in the trombones, we just have more filling out going on. A little bit of staccato here. So yeah, they're just being sort of the horns and the and the trombones are just filling at that midsection and some <clears throat> excuse me, some good harmonic colours. And there's quite a lot of you know movement in all of this. It's not just big sort of blocky hell notes, you know, there's quite a lot of a uh, rhythmic interest going on. Certain instruments are weaving in and out. Um Sometimes they're just playing long held notes. Sometimes they're sort of coming in with, with some kind of flourish or some kind of melodic element. Uh, helps keep things interesting. It's sort of a more symphonic way of writing as opposed to maybe like trailer music or hybrid music or something where the orchestra might just be playing more powerful long held chords. Here we're trying to create a sense of, of dynamic and rhythmic interest. But 
but it's all still pretty straightforward stuff. You know, there's nothing nothing too complicated going on here. Then we get to this sort of more flowing section, and here we have um, you know the middle section again being held by the trombones and the uh, horns, and then we have some staccato stuff going on in the trumpets to add the rhythmic interest, and then we have some sort of long held uh, notes, sort of almost like a bass motif in the lower brass. So. <laughs> Just this big long hell chord at the end. It moves us into the next section, or the final section, I should say. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what's going on there. Um, trumpets sound great doing those staccato bits. And we have a kind of, not really a melody, but a kind of melodic thing going on in the horns. And then just... Yeah, just sort of padding out in the, in the trombones then. Then in the tubers in the low brass. As we said, just this. You can see I've just used volume automation to dip out the low brass there. So I didn't want quite so much of the harshness of that low brass. So I just brought it down in the mix, basically. And then just this big staccato climax and that big hell chord at the end and that sort of takes us through the trumpets uh, let's move on to the strings so the strings we're starting off with this not the most realistic thing these these high strings are actually supporting woodwind runs which are the main feature you don't really hear the high strings uh that much in the mix they're just adding some weight to that frequency spectrum the really the main function of the strings at this point are in the lower strings and the viola so the viola are, are, are playing this kind of i just solo the viola this kind of continuing pattern these are all array by the way um by audio imperia So essentially they're just kind of outlining the chords and, and this repeating pattern is really just adding you know you have these like staccato chords um so we need something in the middle of that just to keep a rhythmic interest and keep something sort of anchoring the piece so you can hear how they work in the context of the mix without that Just sounds a bit empty. You need something going on in the middle there. <coughs> Excuse me. And just have that little sort of flourish going on in all the strings there, as we have a big held notes in the cello. add some tension at that point again they don't sound that realistic by themselves i probably could have programmed a bit better but because it's a really busy mix i didn't need to do too much work they just poke it to create this kind of rhythmic um, feature that keeps the the piece moving on and the momentum going and now we're into these short march like uh, chords Actually, they're really just how they're all the same note, they're not different octaves. So, and at that point, they take on a slightly more melodic feature. So, 
So you can hear in the context of the mix how that works. The first half they're just supporting, then the second half they kind of take over this rising um, feature. <laughs> a brief pause in the lower strings and brass there to add some extra weight when they come back in. In this sort of flowing section here, um, all the strings are, are playing this kind of almost broken chords, really, these, these um, sort of arpeggiated notes. The basses are doubling what was happening in the low brass. Um, and I'm just using a little technique here, which is sometimes quite useful, of changing up the articulations just to create a more interesting texture. So, for example, here in violins, when we have legato, oh, it would be if it played. I'll just fix that, actually, it's not quite working. That sounds good, but I also added the slightly shorter notes in the second violin. So playing the same notes, but a slightly different articulation. Combined, it just helps to create something that has both the flow of the legato, but also something with a bit more rhythmic excitement. And then we add cello and the violas in different octaves then to really thicken up that section. And the only thing to really mention here as well is obviously I'm using throughout this quite a lot of volume automation. Um, this is just coming in you know as and when I need it. Sometimes certain things sound a bit loud or a bit quiet and I'm really just using this to shape the lines in the context of the the mix um, just to get the performance that I want um, so if we just go to the final section nothing too much to note there just these short notes and then the tremolo big chord at the end and the final held note in the cello and basses you're not getting the basses there. There we go. Of course, cool, so I think that's all there is to mention with the strings there, really. And then obviously I'm just, as always, using modulation data and velocity data just to shape certain sections. So as an example here, you, know, we, you can hear how we're riding so certain notes sort of flow out. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, there's actually not that much going on really because the, the strings are probably not the main feature of this. So there's not a huge amount of crafting going on in the strings. Um, woodwinds, take a quick look. The woodwinds are mostly supporting other instruments. So if I just play these, the main feature of the woodwinds is actually, it's all audio and pier apart from the runs, which are from Cine Samples, Hollywood Winds, old library, but really good one. And um, yeah, really they're providing the main uh, feature of these woodwinds, which are these run patterns. So yeah, you can hear the, the runs and the rips are louder because that's really the features that I, I want from the woodwinds. The rest of the woodwinds are just supporting other instruments. So for example, we've got the clarinets from Nucleus here. Just adding some weight to what was happening in the violas from earlier. The low brass and strings have been supported by the bassoons.
just doubling and the trumpets being supported by the Nucleus Woodwind Ensemble. All straightforward stuff and yeah I just like using pre-recorded runs because it's hard to make runs sound realistic using you know legato patches or short patches you know you can get a pretty good um, result but nothing kind of beats a real run so that's why I'm using a runs library. The only other feature really worthy of note in the woodwinds are the trills. And they actually don't sound that realistic um, by themselves, but the, really it's not so much the notes that they're playing that's important. Obviously they have to be roughly in tune, but it's, it's just the texture. Um, they really help to add tension to the piece. So... Sounds a bit weird by itself, but in context... We just see if we get rid of them. So you can't really hear them clearly, but you can just feel that they're missing when they go. And and you know, trills row is a great way to add tension or, or um, you know something rhythmic and something that pushes the music along. Um, so yeah, there's just some trills going on in the flutes and the lower um, woodwinds as well. It's actually not the most realistic woodwind writing because it would probably be hard to get all of this going on between the woodwinds we've got available, but we're not going for total realism here. Um, we're just kind of going for texture. <laughs> It just it ends with the uh, woodwind ensemble. And a final trill, which again isn't doesn't sound that great by itself, but in context. Just helps to add a final bit of excitement to that piece. Um, we'll briefly cover the percussion and pitch percussion, but there's not a lot going on there. Um, percussion is pretty straightforward, it's just very traditional orchestral percussion, so we're not using anything from uh, Audio Imperial Cerberus or Jaeger, you know, we're just using the very traditional um, orchestral percussion, timpani, bass drum, grand cassa, uh, snares, cymbals, bit of triangle, that's it really, if I just solo these. So it's almost like a marching kit kind of sound to it. You know, it's almost like a marching band or something. Um, there's not a lot to say, really. It's just the timpanis are helping to accent some of the low notes um, that have been played in the low strings and woodwinds and brass. So you can hear. And the snares are really just accentuating the higher notes. That's it really. Um, there's some cymbal work going on as well. Just adding some high frequency content to create some excitement. And then in the marching section it's adding some drive. Nothing that exciting in this sort of flowing section here with these chords. We're just keeping a constant um, snare drum and cymbal uh, going. Really quiet, but bringing it up with the volume. And what that's doing, again, you can't really hear it in the context of the mix, but that constant bed of sound that's growing in intensity, it's almost like white noise. It's just creating this exciting texture. Um, that helps along with the trills and everything else just to, to sort of push this section forward. That's really all that's going on there. Obviously we got the, everything being accentuated by the percussion at the end. There's 
there's some nice rolls on the bass drum and timpani is just to really give that chord final chord a big push um pitch percussion we'll move on to briefly now and there's not a lot going on here there's a very very quiet piano which is again audio imperious clavier piano great piano um it's really barely audible it's just providing a bit of uh transient to some of the the notes really badly programmed but i wasn't looking for realism it's it's hardly in the mix it's just there to provide a bit of support what's more interesting in the pitch percussion is the harp and this is the harp from audio imperial's nucleus um there was an update released not so long ago uh, which added a few new instruments including a harp and it's a really good sounding harp so i'm just using this for harp runs basically sounds really good i've just programmed these in by hand you know um so they sound really good and really they're just coming in to accentuate each section in this sort of flowing section here they're just providing these constant glissandi kind of uh, textures can't really hear them by themselves uh, by itself sorry but you know it, it's helping to support what's going on with the trills and the and the um, snares and, and cymbals in that section and then there's just a glock that comes in that section that's just accentuating those notes in the violins and woodwinds so just a nice sparkly texture to add some almost like a you know slightly sci-fi like quality on top at that point that's literally all it's doing at that section and that's from nucleus as well everything's from nucleus uh, or jaeger or Rea, apart from um those woodwind runs I think that takes us through everything really in terms of the the arranging and programming of this um so we can move on to mixing but i'm not going to dwell too long on mixing mostly because actually there's not that much going on in the mixing and mastering if i bring my mix console over so here's what we're using i'm using these are all just gain tools and really as i'm mixing i'm just bringing stuff up and down slightly overall you know i like to use the volume faders a lot as you can see but sometimes when something's just generally not quite sitting right in the mix i just bring it up by a couple of db or something so down one db here you know here we've got something going up by three db but it's those kind of levels there's hardly any eq or compression going on in the individual instruments there's one or two just shaping basically no crazy dips just some shaping of the horns there there's a tiny bit of shaping of the tuba um taking a bit of mud in this sort of section here around 200 hertz tiny bit of bass coming out um but you can almost count on one hand, I think, the number. There's a tiny bit more going on in the percussion. Um, getting rid of a tiny bit of the low, some of the mud in the timpani, um, the grand cassa, adding a tiny bit of top end, taking out the very, very sort of inaudible stuff. Nearly all percussion is going to have stuff going between, say, two and 300 hertz. That's where there's some mud. Um, so I'm just taking that out. And with the percussion, grand cassa, I'm also adding a tiny bit of low air this is a waves plug and it just adds some low frequency content um sort of sub content um it's probably barely doing anything in the context of this but you know it just helped to, to add some weight to those um bass drums a little bit of shaping with eqs going on here often when you see there's more than one eq i'm just kind of being lazy and as i'm going along you know i'll mix something so it sounds good and then as i'm mixing the rest of the instruments suddenly i realize oh maybe something's sounding a bit you know not not poking out of the mix enough or poking out too much so i'll come back in with a second eq just to continue shaping so you can see like here i've got two eqs the first one is taking out the main stuff here so what i don't need and then the second one's just shaping generally there was a bit too much top end um, but there's not a lot going on hardly anything going on in the individual instruments it's all really happening in the group buses so i've got groups for strings uh, brass woodwind percussion vocals which are the choir pitch percussion we don't have hits or synths or sound design in this they're just part of my template um and as i said i don't don't want to dwell too much on this because it's all pretty straightforward stuff so as you can see i'm shaping here if i just play a little bit um so how best to do this here we go 
sorry, it's a bit of an awkward setup I've got here at the moment. So... <laughs> That's with the mixing. And that's without, just sounds a slightly duller. So what I'm doing is I'm shaping generally here, taking a little bit of bass out, a couple of dB, a little bit of mud. Sometimes strings can sound a bit shrill around three to four kilohertz bit nasally and a bit warbly you know so we can just take some of that out and then adding a tiny bit of you know air as they call it on top you know we've got quite a lot of percussive elements quite a lot of low brass um, so we're just making some space for that here I'm also using a channel strip plug in here um, pretty straightforward one called the omni channel from waves um, that's doing a few things um, Nothing too crazy. Yeah, he's not changing things much, rather than a tiny bit of saturation, um, which is just you know helping to add some extra frequencies, helping to thicken up the sound a bit, but not much. It's just a pretty soft one. We're also adding a tiny bit more high end, so just a tiny bit of air, a couple of dB, two point seven, taking out a tiny bit of mud. That's about it. We're adding what's called thump um, here, which is basically just a, an EQ curve around 100 hertz, I think, which is just adding a bit of weight to the low end. You know, but again, it's sort of testament to my lazy mixing that in, in some ways I'm taking out stuff here and then adding it back on in the next breath. You know, a lot of it's like... It's like sculpting, you know, you're continually shaping. So you get a section sounding good, and then when you put it in the mix, you think, oh, it sounds pretty good, but I'm now missing a little bit of something. And you can come back in with another plugin or go back to the original plugin and just shape things as you're going. Um, and to be honest, the rest of what's here is going to be pretty much the same. So brass, tiny bit of shaping. I'm taking some of the lows and highs here because I wanted this to sound quite a traditional symphonic score. Um, you know, almost like something that might have been made 20, 30 years ago or something for a film. So I didn't want so much of the high and low. I wanted it to sound a little bit more like it was made on tape or something or, you know, that it was being recorded on a slightly older setup almost. Um, so some of the brightness and depth has been reduced a bit. So if I just play... Oh, it might help if I actually play the brass instead of... None of this stuff is making huge differences. It's just taking something that's been arranged and then just tweaking some of the some of the muddy muddiness and some of the bass and some of the highs just to make it fit in the context of the mix. So exactly the same sort of stuff going on here. The only difference with this, I'm doing a tiny bit of compression as well with a slow attack. So what that's doing is it's letting the transients through, you know, the staccato trumpets and the big low brass, but then it's... Um, bringing a compressor in just to just to squash everything slightly but allow those transients through so we don't lose the dynamic range so you can see it's going to be barely more than a db pretty much maximum db nothing too exciting going on there um same with woodwinds again i've got a general eq for shaping tiny bit more presence probably the most drastically changed is the woodwinds so if i play woodwinds here oh, i don't know why that's gone panning there so so you can hear that high end that we're adding maybe a tiny bit too much but um yep and then same kind of shaping a little bit of uh compre well actually no compression a little bit of uh saturation here shaping a tiny bit with this eq section here that's it and then gain staging to make sure everything fits um, oh, I'm also using a stereo enhancer here because I want to bring the woodwinds in. Your woodwinds sit in the center of the orchestra, and sometimes when you when you want to create a sense of width, actually, rather than trying to make everything wider, sometimes it can help to bring stuff in a little bit. So that's what I've done with these woodwinds. It's 
yeah. just focusing those woodwinds in the center a bit more, which is helping to give me some more stereo width for other elements. Um, it's going to be the same with percussion, a little bit of shaping, nothing too crazy. Taking out mud, as I said, that two to three hundred section is always a culprit. Tiny bit of the bass, leaving a bit of space in the center here for the rest of the instruments. That's about it. Um, oh, wrong one. A bit more shaping here, taking some, well, taking a little bit of everything off in the end here. Tiny, tiny bit of saturation, and then some compression again you know percussion can be a very transient section because you've got a lot of hits with snares and bass drums using a gentle compressor with a slow attack can just glue everything together without losing too much of that transient um, interest so i'll just play the percussion in isolation there you can see pretty much maximum 3 dB, so not a crazy amount going on there. And then we'll look finally at the choir. There's barely anything going on. The pitch percussion choir we're using, again, same shaping. What I'm taking out here, even though it looks drastic, it's all below, you know, it's, it's coming out, you know, sort of below 100 really. So none of this stuff is really being heard. Uh, it's just room rumble. And to be honest, it's, it's not that you can hear this. It's not that there's room rumble in the library. It's just, it's good practice to sometimes cut some of this away just in case there's a tiny bit of rumble there that's you know going to be muddying up the bass so as you can hear there's hardly anything there taking some of the high end off again because i wanted that slightly darker sound i didn't want it to be too bright um and tiny bit of shaping taking it some of the mids and lows here tiny bit of uh, saturation, tiny bit of compression again. And quite a bit, you know, on those very highest notes, just to just to keep the the um the choir sort of in the mix, make sure it doesn't poke out too much. But if I play you with and without the mixing, you'll hear it's not really doing a crazy amount. brightening and making some room in the sort of lower mids for you know the, the bass and the horns and things like that um, which are playing some sort of uh, important role tiny bit of ott this is a free plugin great a lot of people you know use it these days for all kinds of different work it just it's a great multi-pan uh, compressor sort of upwards downwards compressor so You know, OTT often sounds like it's sort of taking the blanket off something slightly. It just it just makes something sound a bit brighter. Um, but I'm using it gently there. You can see that it's on a setting of 5%, so it's not being used to really color the mix. Um, yeah, I think that's all there is to say. Just pretty standard reverbs, um, you know, quantum loop spaces, one for strings, one for brass, um, one for, you know, woodwinds and percussion and so on. Then I'm just mixing them to taste so if i come across here just basically mixing them here and then using a tiny bit of hall reverb as well just to add a, a longer tail to things so you can hear if i take the strings <laughs> sounds pretty dry um without the reverbs and then Pretty straightforward stuff nothing too too uh, in depth to talk about there mastering i mean i'm not not really mastering as such um you know even though there's quite a lot of uh plugins here actually they're all doing very little so a tiny bit more shaping again wanted quite a dark mix so taking some of those highs away taking a tiny bit of mids and a tiny bit of the lowest bass here uh, a multi-band compressor so if i play this whole thing what the multiband compressor is doing is well just compressing different bands you know so we're, we're compressing the bass and the lower mids a bit more heavily than the upper it's just controlling things basically um you know helping to keep everything sounding compact and and you know a little bit more analog in some ways adding 
a tiny bit of volume here just to make up for some of the cuts that we're doing. Um, this is a free plugin by a company called Analog Obsession. I say it's free. This is basically a guy that makes amazing analog sounding plugins. Um, you can download them all for free from his, I think his Patreon. Um, but you can donate if you feel compelled to do so. And I would definitely donate because all those donations go towards uh, him, I believe, making you know more and more analog uh, sounding plugins. They're all great, but you can download these for free. You don't have to uh, sign up or um, donate. So you can maybe try some out. And if you like them, let's send them some uh, support. But uh, I'm actually, I, I put this on and then gradually, bit by bit, I reduced it and reduced it. So it's barely doing anything now. You can hear. <laughs> creating a nice analog warmth to the whole thing um, but I'm barely doing anything in terms of EQ here and again a tiny bit more volume because sometimes what I like to do is as I'm mastering add tiny tiny bits more volume as I go along rather than using a limiter at the end just to, to crunch everything down to get it up to volume if I'm just adding a half dB here or a dB there by the time I get to the, the limiting at the end of the mastering chain there's nothing much else to do really um, so yeah that's all that's happening here ozone um, elements, just a really, really basic version, doing pretty much nothing whatsoever. A tiny bit of lower, uh, sorry, high end reduction again, just to keep things compact and and make it sound a bit darker. Tiny bit of width, uh, stereo widening, hardly any, because you don't want to make it too wide and, and make it sound too. Uh, like it's not got a center, you know, and then a tiny bit of limiting here. Just add a bit more gain at this stage too, with a tiny bit of character. After that comes my soft clip. And now a soft clip is just essentially kind of saturation, really. It helps to give the the perception of loudness without actually adding, you know, just, just pure volume um, by adding sort of interesting um, harmonic distortion. <laughs> very gentle you can barely hear it but it's just lifting the the uh the piece slightly tiny bit of ott again depth on nine percent again it almost sounds like we're lifting a blanket off slightly and it's making everything sound a little bit brighter but also more focused uh, so i'm taking a tiny bit of the mid set here adding a tiny bit of uh, lows that's really all it's doing and a low depth so it's not coloring the sound too much but just adding enough to, to change it slightly and this is a free plugin um, so you can get this whenever you want it's a great plugin it's useful in lots of different genres and I use it quite a lot in my pieces um, a final neutron which is literally doing nothing apart from a tiny bit more darkening after the OTT just to finally shape everything the way I want it and then a tiny bit of um, low end removal too, just to do, it's essentially just sculpt and again, final shape. Yeah. And then the limiter is literally by this stage, I, because I've increased everything very gently throughout the mastering chain, by the time we get here, it's doing nothing, 0.3 of a dB. Because I didn't want this to be a super hot mix, it didn't have to be, you know, clipping or getting to the, you know, zero dB or anything, you can see it's I could go a bit louder. There's kind of no point really. It's you know it's fine there. Uh, so it's actually not doing anything. It's really just there just to make sure that there are no final peaks or anything like that. Um, and that takes us to the end of the mastering chain. This is just span free analyzer plugin that I use sometimes when I'm mixing just to sort of visually check the mix and see if there's any obvious problems. Uh, can be useful when you when you know to use these things just to sort of focus in on the mix here, certain sections and maybe clean up the mix where and you know how, how you need it to be cleaned up. So yeah, that's that's literally all that's going on. Um, I don't think there's really anything else to talk about with this piece. Obviously, if there's anything that you guys, if you watched this and enjoyed it, but there's a question that you have or something you want to know more about, do let me know in the comments below and I will try and answer any questions or, um, you know, sort of input I get. Uh, I hope this has been useful to you guys. Um, 
you know, I had great fun making it, great fun using Chorus. It's a great library uh, and it's one of those very easy to play, fits straight into your mixes, sounds huge, kind of everything you want for big, you know, epic orchestral scoring. Um, and yeah, this was just a piece I put together in a couple of hours that uh, hopefully, you know, showed off some of the uh, strengths of Chorus and I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing through it. I hope you found this useful. Um, thanks for watching and I shall see you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.